Yeah, this is certainly kind of a little bit of a buzz in the meteorological world because it just happened the other day. But initially, uh, you know, it was a damage rating of the F3. Yes. Then from the mobile Doppler radars that they had out there, and they saw the winds, which you're going to show us in a minute, we jack it up to EF5 because of the incredible wind they found now, just over the past several days, it has been pushed back down to EF3. Forbes, is this just simply a case of, look, we're using the damage scale as a damage scale, regardless of what we find on these winds on the route, right on the radars? Yeah, that's basically it. The National Weather Service policy is to use damage in rating of the tornadoes, and as you say, the initial rating they came out with right after the fact, looking at the damage survey, was right. EF3. We're seeing some of that damage here. The uh, home here is pretty much collapsed. That's going to certainly get you into EF3. They'll look at the strength of the structure, how well it was built to see if that might have been an EF4. The issue was that then after the fact, uh, they've got information right. that, well, the mobile Doppler radars were seeing winds aloft that were way above that EF3 range. They were seeing above 200 miles per hour, which is the limit for the uh, two, uh, EF5 rating. Right, and right. For our viewers at home, this kind of looks like a hurricane. <laughs> yeah, these tornadoes in these up close and personal mobile Doppler research radars definitely look like mini hurricanes with little eyes right where the tornado is. This one actually has a satellite tornado oh, that's wow. revolving about it. So there's two circulations there, and each one of those have their wind circulation as well. This is the tornado vortex signature, the main tornado. And then there's also one that's very strong with the tornado revolving about it. So the mobile Doppler radars, one by Howie Bluestein, the Rax Pole, and one by Josh Werman, the Dow, were getting 245 to 265 mile per hour winds up at about the 300 to 350 foot level. So that's right, so way that above the EF5 level. But that said, it's also way above the surface at 300 feet. Yeah, the reference level is 33 is feet. So there's a huge difference can take place there, and we don't know how to do that. Uh, we, we've seen some tornadoes that tear sod right out of the ground, so the winds go all the way to the ground. We see others where it takes the roof off, maybe takes the building, but leaves a flower pot sitting in the front porch. So we don't know how to scale from 300 feet down to the ground very perfectly. Let's look at the video yeah. of what that radar was looking at, and you could actually see these multiple vortices. Could yeah, you? it starts out there as one big wide tornado a bit on the broad side, uh, but then at look times, at like some of these will do, it breaks down into multiple tornadoes there. We call them suction vortices. They revolve about the parent tornado. They have their own low pressure, their own counterclockwise rotation, and they may be traveling more than 100 miles per hour as they're steered around that parent tornado. So the fastest winds come with those, and we believe that that is what is likely to have hit Mike Bettis's vehicle as well as Tim Samaris' vehicle, and probably the strongest velocities were in those. But we still can't use cars as a good damage indicator. Can yeah, we? history has shown that cars, the vehicles r r behave much differently. It may again have to do with uh, how fast or slowly the winds uh, accelerate as you get right down toward the ground. So sometimes the cars are not good indicators of the tornado wind speed. But the data can't be ignored. EF5 with an asterisk maybe? Uh, yeah, I, I think I'd probably go EF5 with an asterisk, but for now the National Weather Service is reassessing how to use Doppler radar data. All right, good stuff, Forbes. We appreciate that.